Hi guys, Tony here. Today I wanted to talk about the topical anti-androgen 58841. This is more of an experimental compound. It's a bit though it's been around for a few decades, but it's been going through trials in the last few years and uh, I've seen some promising results with it. So I'll explain how it works first of all, go into some people's results, and then talk about the reasons why I'm doing it. So RU58841 is a non-steroidal anti-androgen, so it helps with 5-alpha reductase, it's like an inhibitor, but not uh, your like your typical ones I've mentioned here, like dutasteride and finasteride. So the difference is those two drugs, which are FDA approved, they affect your androgen profile, affecting satellite cells, Cells and can have downstream effects. Whereas this RU compound, what it does is it actually blocks a receptor, so it doesn't actually have any effect on the rest of your hormone profile. So in essence, what it's doing is making certain hairs less sensitive to the DHT, and then that can block hair loss. And so some people uh, does say if even if they were to do a blast steroids, especially like even a DHT heavy one, they wouldn't lose the hair because say someone like Ronald Reagan, who's got very strong hairline. So some people naturally have hair that is not sensitive to DHT in any way. So by putting on this compound, you're effectively making your hair less sensitive to the DHT. Whereas these other drugs, finasteride and dutasteride, what they do is they turn, they convert the DHT into other types of testosterone. They can, they can increase your testosterone, your total testosterone, and they, but they could also have all kinds of downstream effects on different hormones. And this is why there's a lot of side effects associated with them, like uh, it can affect your libido, and some people it can affect even your mood, they can give you depression, or even some people can get, uh, like their muscles can become more puffy, they can lose their strength in the gym, even gynecomastia is something for a very small amount of people. And there's even been reports that some of these effects are really long lasting, like depression and effects on uh, impotence. So this, you do have to be very careful when you start doing these drugs. And that's why people often recommend starting quite small with the dosage. And this is why it's gained some popularity rather than letting this finasteride build up systemically, doing it topically. But because it's actually quite a small molecule, there's, there's quite a lot of evidence that it still does build up systemically. If you do it finasteride on your scalp, it will build up in your system. Whereas something like dutasteride is a larger molecule, so there's a bit more evidence that it will stay more in the scalp. And it's around 500 Daltons is the kind of crossover point where it kind of gets through the actual skin barrier. So dutasteride is right on that borderline, so that's why there's some evidence that it can just stay in the scalp. Or you might have issues with it actually absorbing in the first place, so that's something to be wary of. You do get some health influencers that are really anti these DHT blockers. I myself, I fall somewhere in the middle. I do accept there are risks, but they, they do have, definitely do have some benefits. So I think it's just about being cautious with the use of it. For example, with finasteride, you can break the pill into four pieces and do uh, 0.25 milligrams rather than doing the whole milligram. Or with dutasteride, another way you can do it is just don't do it every day of the week. I believe there's certain negative points also with suppressing your DHT to nothing systemically in your body because I, don't, I think suppressing any hormone to nothing is not ideal. So by having certain days off, then you can get some kind of fluctuation in DHT because dutasteride is the most powerful. It works on both receptors at blocking DHT. Then I believe yeah, having some fluctuation in it is actually still good for you, but it's we're not having too much. And this is where something topical can really help bridge that gap where you are getting some fluctuation in systemic DHT levels. I believe there's certain evidence that it can actually shorten the telomeres when you suppress your DHT to nothing. And it's your telomeres are basically the caps on the end of your chromosomes. They represent how many divisions that cell, how much life that cell has left. And so the shorter they get, the shorter life that cell has in essence. There's been some crazy transformations with RU58841. I myself haven't been using that long, so I'm just going to reference this to some other people. But there was a particularly impressive one on the channel, More Plates, More Dates, and he was using 100 milligrams a day. Obviously, the, the amount of the dosage is dependent on how big the area is, not just that you need trying to rejuvenate. I myself, I probably I wouldn't need as much as 100 milligrams because the, the area isn't that big. I'm just trying to kind of, I'm doing it more of a, as a preventative thing rather than trying to rejuvenate a certain area. So that gets me onto my own protocol. I bought this Fologain stuff and it's pretty cheap at 30 pounds. And the beauty of it is it's a foaming agent. I don't tend to get along with things that are liquid. My scalp tends to prefer foaming, but you can actually open it up 
And the brilliance of that is you can save a lot of money by buying the powdered RU58841 rather than buying it pre-mixed. This actually contains 5% minoxidil at £30, which is an amazing deal. And you can mix your own blend with the RU. If, so if you to put five grams of 58841 in it, then that would actually work out to around 2.8%. You could put 10 grams in, then that'd be more like 5.6, which would be pretty strong. And it depends on obviously how aggressive your hair loss is. And for, for myself, that, that, that works out to, yeah, so that's three months supply. And I get my RU from Swiss Chems. They're really, they've been around a long time. They even have their own credit card if you want to buy things uh, in advance. And if you hit $100, it's free delivery across the US. With RU58841, there's very little side effects. There has been some reports of people getting a bit of redness and itchiness around the scalp. Apart from that, that's about it. So compared to these other drugs I mentioned previously, there's very low in side effects. Although, yeah, like I say, it's more in experimental stages, but there, there isn't any kind of real cautionary kind of advice to give out apart from those kind of side, those small side effects. So I'm putting it on twice a day, obviously, with my minoxidil. And the minoxidil the, is quite a thick one, this one. So what I tend to do is I put, obviously put it on in the evening. I wash my hair in the morning, but what I'll do is I put it on before washing my hair. You know, you, ideally you'd want an hour, ideally two hours, really let it sink in. But uh, yeah, I, tr I like to have it washed off because it does leave some residue. And all the brands I've used, I've used uh, Kirkland, another foaming one, that still leaves a little bit of residue. There are some that don't, then you do pay a lot more for it. A lot of these foaming ones, you won't be able to mix the RU with it. So just take that into account. And yeah, occasionally, yeah, on the, occasionally on the rare occasion, I might only do it once a day. Say if I re really need to get out of the house early and wash my hair then, but if I'm doing it twice a day, six days a week, then effectively you're doing it pretty much every day, twice a day. And what another thing I do is a microneedling pen. I'll typically do that once a week at depth of 0.85 millimeters. Some people do it more frequently, like twice a week. Depends on the depth. Some people go deeper. It's just a case of trial and error. Maybe start at 0.75 and see how much you can build up past that. But by doing the microneedling first, then you can uh, make your scalp more open to these other compounds going through, so the Medoxidil and the RU. And not only are you making the skin more absorbent to these compounds, you're also increasing uh, cell regeneration and blood flow to those areas too. So I load my dutasteride dose from doing the half a milligram seven days a week down to two days a week. I think initially I went down to the three pills a week and then I've lowered it further. This is about nine months ago for the first few months and then I lowered it down to two pills a week. My hair's been all right so far, but that's something I really worry about because I'm on testosterone replacement therapy and obviously so my testosterone is higher. That can drive up DHT a little bit in conjunction with that. And hair is not something you want to really rest on your laurels with. If you, when you start to notice it thinning, then that's, it can be a bit too late. So now by doing the RU58841, then I feel like I'm really confident. I'm tackling the hair loss from many different angles. I've got my dutasteroid that's keeping it systemically, keeping it low, but with a little bit of fluctuation, but not completely suppressed. And then the, the residual DHT that does get to the scalp is now being tackled with the RU. And then I'm increasing blood flow with the minoxidil as well. So there's multiple different pathways and I'm increasing the absorption by doing the microneedling. So I just feel like I'm really tackling their hair loss from multiple different angles. Also do a bit of red light therapy as well. I do that like three to four days a week and that can help with blood flow to the scalp healing. And it can even help with uh, gray hairs. And this is another area I'm uh, going into too, is just trying to reverse the few grey hairs I've got here, there's not many, just a few little speckles and it'd just be interesting to see if I can do that through different pathways. So I'll be keeping you updated with further content on that. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.